Good morning. This is Wednesday, and I am going to begin covering ratios with you. So let's take a look at this first slide. And you have a number of examples of ratios that you can see here. This one is what we celebrated on Monday. Remember, we said that Pi Day is the relationship or the ratio of circumference to diameter. And the value of pi is 3.14. The example that you see here is from last year. Remember we said that the 3.14, that's March 14th, and then we had the year, 2015, at 9.26 a.m. And these are the digits of pi, 3.1415926. This year, when we looked at pi, remember we took a look at 3.14, and then we looked at the 159 and rounded up the 5 to the 6, or 2 a 6, for 3.14.16, March 14th, 2016. So... Hopefully you had fun on Monday when we proved pi using um, the protractor and string. And you drew your circles and measured the diameter, measured the circumference, and divided to see how close you could get. Here is an example of a recipe. And you have two cups of flour to one cup of sugar. That is also a ratio, a two to one ratio. You can have a three to one ratio. There's three blue rectangles to one yellow rectangle. And this um, image down here tells you what a ratio is, comparing two or more amounts. And here we've got four chairs to every table. So you have a four to one ratio. You can also have ratios in triangles. And this is looking at the ratio of the opposite to the adjacent. Um, for each triangle, well, you're using trigonomic functions here, which is not something that you've started working with yet. That's a, a higher level of math, but again, ratios. And we're looking at the population of people in California to people in the United States, and you have ratios here. This is looking at a teacher-to-student ratio, and this is looking at average teacher to student ratio. So teacher to student ratio in California, teacher to student ratio in the United States. So the theme that we're going to be covering over the next few days is ratios. And taking a look at our objectives, a learning goal, and essential question, well, just like we looked at on that first slide, you're going to define and explore ratios. Learning goal, define ratios and explore equivalent ratios. Represent ratios using symbols, words, tables, and tape diagrams. This is not all going to be in today. This is our learning goal over the next several days to be covering this and looking at this. Today, you will be explaining the relationship between ratios and fractions. And we'll be looking at ratios written so that they look like fractions and state the three ways to show a ratio. This will be covered in the lesson. You will be expected to write down or take some notes on this and then be able to share this. The essential question, how can a ratio be formed and expressed? And why do you need to know about ratios? Well, you need to know how materials and objects relate to one another. Some common rates and ratios that you may be familiar with is price per gallon when we're talking about uh, buying gas or miles per hour um, when you're driving or um, cost per pound if you're trying to figure out how much something costs and if you need um, multiple amounts of it what that would be, or for ratio, for recipes, when you're looking at how much water to how much flour or how much sugar to how much um, other ingredients that you might have in it. 
we talked about making rice and rice is a two to one ratio two cups of water to one cup of rice so those are all examples that you use in everyday life for ratios so let's go on to ratios are everywhere and I have three examples in math in science and in everyday life and what you're going to do right now is you're going to think first to yourself and then you're going to share your idea or your ideas with the person next to you um, you might want to jot these down so that you can remember what they are and I will be calling individuals to um, share what they thought ratios might be in these areas so one minute thinking silently writing some notes down a big hint you should have one for math and this involves what we did on Monday so think about what that ratio is um, and then in science and everyday life and jot some ideas down so the substitute is going to start the timer for one minute and when the timer is up or actually just time you using the clock when the minute is up then you are going to share your ideas for two minutes A's are going to talk first B's are going to listen and take notes on what they say then B's are going to talk next and A's are going to listen and take notes on what they say and then after that those two minutes I'm going to call on um, people to share what they think and then I'll reveal what I have here so the substitute is going to pause the video now for a total of three minutes one minute you're working silently two minutes you're sharing go ahead and stop now and come back in in three minutes okay now that we're back in period one I want Rachel and Ashley, Jason, Dallas, and Josh to give an example of ratios in any of the categories that are here. So pause the video here and the names that I called are the people who are going to share their ideas. Ready? Pause the video and share. Okay. So now that you're done sharing, let's check and see how many of what you came up with um, are, is also what I added here. So in math, ratio of circumference to diameter, I certainly hope at least one of you, if not all of you, shared that in math, the ratio of circumference to diameter or pi is a ratio. You can also have the ratio of increase in the x variable to the increase in the y variable. Remember when we were plotting um, time and distance not too long ago and what that looked like. Also, we were um, plotting the increase of money. We had some people who were saving for different purchases that they wanted to make and you were plotting what their um, the growth of the money was, how much money they were getting. So we plotted the increase in the X to the increase in the Y. You can also have the length of the sides of triangles. That's a ratio there, and that is another example of where that would be used in math. How about science? Well, conversion rates, feet to meters, or miles to kilometers, is an example of a ratio conversion of time minutes to hours days to week weeks to years would also be examples of ratios in everyday life water to rice is an example recipes fuel consumption miles per gallon or speed miles per hour cost per pound all of those are examples of ratios in the areas of math science in everyday life so let's go on so now we're going to take a look at this example and this is the should be the first page in book 11 
So if you haven't put your name on the front cover, put your name on it now. And I take open up to, I believe this should be the first page. If not, open up to the page that has this on it. And Gretchen was asked to write three fractions that are equivalent to three-sevenths. Her work is shown below. And she has three-sevenths plus the big one, two over two. And she said that's five-ninths. Three-sevenths plus three over three. And she said that's six-tenths. Three-sevenths plus four over four. And she said that's seven-elevenths. This was her idea of how to write equivalent fractions. We're going to jump down to two. An old television commercial stated that four out of five dentists surveyed recommend sugarless gums for their patients who chew gum. I actually remember that commercial. Um, and what does that really mean? So if four out of five dentists surveyed recommend sugarless gum, what does that mean? What is that saying? Because that's another example of a ratio. So the substitute is going to stop the video here. And you're going to have three minutes to work with your partner to take a look at one and Gretchen and what she did and think about what mistakes she had or the thought process, what's wrong with the way she did this. And then also explain in your own words what you think that statement means about four out of five dentists. So stop the video here and in three minutes you're going to come back. Okay, here we go. So let's see what you have written down or explained for this. And first, I would like um, Jason to share what he and his partner explained. Giselle Garcia, you're going to explain what you and your partner talked about. And Emily, you're going to explain what you and your partner talked about. So get ready and Jason begin and then the others are going to follow along and explain after. Okay. Okay, hopefully I'm not cutting anyone off yet. I did not say pause the video. So um, let's check and see if your explanations were along this idea. Gretchen needs to multiply by one, not add, to make equivalent fractions. Remember, two over two, that would be the big one. And if you multiplied three times two and got six and seven times two and got 14, that would be an equivalent fraction. If you multiply 3 times 3 and get 9, 7 times 3 and get 21, that would be an equivalent fraction. 3 times 4 and get 12, 7 times 4 and get 28, that would be an equivalent fraction. She did not do that. She did make the big one, but she added. She needs to remember that when you add, you need a common denominator. So hopefully you said something along that line for um, the problems that Gretchen had. And the second one, if I'm looking at four out of five dentists recommended sugarless gum for their patients who chew gum, then that means for every five dentists that were surveyed, four of them said chew sugarless gum. All right. So now, introduction to ratios. We already talked about a ratio is a pair of numbers, not both zero in a specific order. And the ratio of A to B now we're going to look at how it can be written. The ratio of A to B can be denoted by A colon B. You're going to read that, or that's read as A to B, or A for every B. And here's an example. If there were three coins and two paper clips in your pocket, then the ratio of the number of coins to the number of paper clips is 3 to 2, or 3 colon 2. We may also refer to this ratio simply as the ratio of coins to paper clips. So now, what is another example of a ratio? Share your ideas with your partner. You have 45 seconds and you don't know who I'm going to call on, so be ready to share out. 
Ready and discuss. Okay, and this time I would like to start with um, Wendy. Share what you and Emily talked about. And Austin, share what you and your partner talked about. Then Dallas, share what you and your partner talked about. And finally, Tyler, share what you talked about. Okay, here we go. Now, find this page in your book, and you're going to write the ratios below on this diagram, for this diagram, of circles and arrows. Here are the circles, here are the arrows, and you're going to write the number of circles to the number of arrows. Notice you got it two different ways, 3, 2, and the number you have here, or 3, colon, and the number that you have there. So take about one minute, stop the video here, take one minute, fill this out, and then come back in after one minute. Okay, so I'm looking at the number of circles to the number of arrows. There's one, two, three circles, one, two, three, four, five arrows. So I have a three to five or a three colon five. You read it the same way, three to five. The second one, the number of circles to the total number of shapes. Well, if I have three circles and five arrows, all together, there are eight shapes. So I have three to eight or three to eight. The number of arrows to the number of circles. So I'm comparing now arrows to circles. Well, there are five arrows. There are three circles or five two, three. The number of arrows to the total number of shapes. This time I'm looking at how many arrows there are. And there are five arrows all together looking at arrows and circles. There are eight all together. So I've got five, two, eight. Total number of shapes to the total number of arrows. Well, I've got five arrows and three circles, so all together I have eight, two, five arrows. Or eight, two, five. The number of circles to the number of circles. Well, I have three circles to three circles. Or three circles two, three circles. Okay, so now, oops, now, we're going to go to the bottom of the page, 
And the original picture is repeated twice here. This is what we looked at originally, and it's repeated again. There are still three circles to every five arrows. Three circles to every five arrows. The new circle to arrow ratio is six to how many? How many do you think are there? And if you said 10, good job. Each number in the 3 to 5 ratio can be multiplied by what number to obtain this new ratio? Well, how many times did we repeat the pattern? And that would be twice. Okay, moving on. Two ratios are equivalent if each number in one ratio is a multiple of the corresponding number in the other ratio by the same positive number. Hmm. Well, that sounds like it might be a little confusing. So let's take a look and see what this is saying. Two ratios are equivalent if each number in one ratio is a multiple of the corresponding number in the other ratio. So I'm looking at two to six. Here's one ratio. Here's my other ratio. Two times what gives me six? Well, that would be two times three. Five times what gives me 15? And that would be three. This is another way of looking at what we have done with equivalent fractions. If I had two fifths and I wanted to make an equivalent fraction of six fifteenths, what is the big one that I would use? This is the exact same thing that you're doing. They're just looking at it this way. Two times what number is six? Well, that's three. Five times what number is 15? Well, that's three. So you're still finding the big one. They're just not showing it in the same way that you find it when we're looking for equivalent fractions. So now take a look at this one and think about seven times what number is 49? Three times what number is 21? And then looking at this one, 24, or actually I'm going to go this way because I've got 24 sixteenths and then I've got 3 halves. So 3 times what number is 24? 2 times what number is 16? Try 9 and 10 and pause the video here for about one minute and then click back in and we'll take a look and see how you did. Okay, so pause here, complete 9 and 10, and then we're going to resume. Okay, so looking at 7 times what is 49? Well, 7 times 7 is 49. 3 times what is 21? Well, 3 times 7 is 21. So, You've got your multiple here. This is the same thing as doing 7 to 3, 49 to 21. And what is the big one that I used to get from 7 to 3 to 49 to 21? And 7 times 7 is 49. 3 times 7 is 21. And then looking at this. Okay, so looking at the last one, and I'm looking at 24 times what is going to give me 3. And 16 times what is going to give me 2. Well, I know that 3 times 8 is 24, and 2 times 16, yeah, 2 times 8 is 16. But 
what would I multiply 24 by to get a 3? Well, it's going to be 1 eighth. What would I multiply 16 by to get a 2? And that would be 1 eighth. Okay? And just so you can see, 24 times 1 eighth is going to give me 24 eighths. which would be 3. To put that there. Okay? 16 times 1 eighth is going to give you 2. So hopefully this one didn't cause you too much of a problem, um, but you would have to really think a little bit about what would that look like and how would you be working that. So now, Equivalent ratios. When variables in a fixed ratio are represented in tables, pairs of table entries form equivalent ratios. So there are five fish to every one frog. What's the possible number of animals that could be in the lab? And what would make sense there? And of course, if you have five fish and one frog, you're going to have a total of six animals. Now, what did I do with the five to get a 10? Well, I multiplied it by two. So what am I going to do with the one? If I multiplied this by two, I doubled this. What am I going to do here? And of course, it would be two. And altogether, there would be 12 animals. So what did I do with the five to get a 30? And if you said multiply by six, you're right. So that means I'm going to multiply the one by six. And the total number of animals is going to be 36. Well, now I'm looking at this. I've got a 20 here. What did I multiply the 1 by to get a 20? And what would you have to multiply the 5 by? And what would that look like? So for this column and this column, I want you to work with the person that you're sitting next to and think about what would make sense. Look at the pattern you know that every time you multiplied the 5 by a number, you multiplied the 1 by the same number. Well, now it's showing you here that you've got a 20. And how would you have gotten that 20? So take a moment and see if you can work that out. Okay. Well, then this must have been multiplied by 20. So that 5 times 20 is going to be 100. And you have a total of 120 animals. Now, this one, I've got a total of 600. I know my ratio was 5 to 1. So I know for every 5 fish, I'm going to have one frog. Well, now I've got 600. But if I come back to my first one, and I look at my 5 to 1 ratio, would that give me a hint? Well, I had a 6 here. This is increased by a, a power of 100. So if I multiply 5 times 100, I'm going to get 500. If I multiply 1 times 100, I'm going to get 100. And then when you combine that, you have your 600. So these are equivalent ratios, very much like equivalent fractions. So now, ratios 5 to 1 and 10 to 2 are equivalent ratios because each number in the first pair is multiplied by 2 in the second pair. 
using the columns in the table above in the arrow diagrams below write another ratio that is equivalent to 5 to 1. This they multiplied by 2. You could multiply this by anything to make another equivalent ratio. So take a moment now, come up with whatever number you want to put here and make an equivalent ratio, and then you're going to work on completing C. Using columns in the table above, write two ratios that represent the ratio of the number of fish to the total number of animals. Show the multiplier with an arrow diagram. You're going to pick any two ratios that you've already done. You're going to put your first one here, you're going to put your equivalent, and then you're going to show what you multiplied by. So work on B and C. Your answers may not be the same. Um, one partner, one group of, or, of, or one pair could get an answer different than another one. So all of your answers are not going to be the same, but take one minute and complete B and then take a look at C and complete C. Pause the video here, but I'm not going to have you share out because there could be differences with this. So just complete this part and we're going to start again in a minute. Okay. And now let's take a look at this chart. The ratio of the number of 12-year-olds to the number of 11-year-olds in the so soccer tournament is 1 to 2. Create a vertical table to the right for this situation. So the ratio of 12-year-olds to the number of 11-year-olds is 1 to 2. Using rows in the table, write two different ratios that are equivalent to 1 to 2 and show they are equivalent with the table diagram. Okay, so looking at what this is telling me here, I know that the number of 12-year-olds to the number of 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds to the number of 11-year-olds is a 1 to 2. Okay, and all together you have a total of three. So now if I have two 12-year-olds, how many 11-year-olds am I going to have? If I multiplied this by two, one times two is two, two times two would be four. And all together I would have six total. Now, you come up with three other different ratios that are equivalent to 1 to 2. Again, you can use any number that you want here, but be realistic. Don't put down something like 2,845. That would not be a reasonable number to put down for the ratio of 12-year-olds to 11-year-olds in a soccer tournament. So take um, a moment and fill the rest of this chart out. Stop the video here for about one minute and then you're going to resume again. Okay, so now we're going to go to exploring ratios. We're going to start this page. If you do not finish this, or if we do not finish this in class, you are going to have this for homework. Okay, so we're going to start here, but because this is a SEM day, we may not have enough time to get through it. So if not, this will be added to your homework. So for an art project in all of her classes, the teacher wants each group to have four rulers and three glue sticks. What is the ratio of rulers to glue sticks? Well, I have four rulers and I have three glue sticks. So I'm going to put ruler and I'm going to put GS for glue stick. And I've got four, two, three.
Rodrigo passes out supplies in period one. He gives four rulers and three glue sticks to the first group, four rulers and three glue sticks to the next group, and continues until he has distributed 24 rulers and a certain number of glue sticks. How many glue sticks did he distribute? Well, I've got an equivalent ratio that I need to make here. I've got four to three, and at the end, I've got 24 rulers, and I have an unknown number of glue sticks. Remember, this is rulers, and this is glue sticks. Well, I'm going to think four times what number is 24? And that's four times six is 24. That means three times six is going to be, not a question mark now, three times six is 18. Use an arrow diagram. I'm going to use four, two, three times. What number are we using here to get 24? And then what is this going to be? Well, the arrow diagram is saying this is what you're going to multiply this by. This is what you're going to multiply this by. Multiplying each side by 6. You get 24 to 18. Okay? So I want you to finish the rest of exploring ratios for homework in addition to what you also have indicated on the board for your homework or actually on the web page for your homework. Okay?